Hi everyone, it's Char here today, and I'm going to be making this pirate pop-up box card. So I made this card here for release week, and I wanted to show you how I made the map background on it, but I thought instead of just recreating the same card, I would change it up a little and I would make a pop-up box card. So I'm going to use the two main pieces, and I'm not going to use the panels that it cuts out. I will show you in a minute how I'm going to make the panels because I'm going to make them look like the map with the jagged edge and the distress inking. So I use the die that cuts out the box. I've cut out two cream colored pieces of cardstock. That will be my box. And then I use the same die to cut out two pieces of craft colored cardstock. And I'm going to use those to make my panels. I've also cut out three of the little strips that go on the inside. So to make my panels, I just kind of pencil in a jagged, irregular line. And the reason why I cut two of the craft cardstock boxes is I'm going to cut those apart. And then all those pieces are what I'm going to use for my size guides for my panels. So I'm just cutting those apart. I'm going to be doing all three of the little flaps and all three of the outside panels of the boxes. So I've got two of each piece here. So I'm going to take each one and I'm just going to pencil line my guidelines. And I'm just going to put it in from the outside edge a little bit and just freehand a jagged line here. There's no right or wrong reason to do this because obviously it's going to kind of look like torn paper. The reason I did this versus tearing it though is because you can still keep it more of a rectangular shape. Tearing it makes it really irregular and it's hard to control the shape. So if you want to make a panel like I'm making here, this is a great way to do it. So I will just erase that pencil line when I'm done, but I'm just going to go in with my scissors and kind of use that guide. You don't have to follow it perfectly, obviously. Just do whatever works for you there. If some of the little jagged parts are a little too small or a little too big, just adjust accordingly. It doesn't have to be perfect, and when we ink the edges, they're going to kind of roll up a little bit and make it even look more worn. The card, I actually used my craft knife, which you can see there, which I started with, but I found that the scissors are actually a whole lot faster. So I'm just going to erase those pencil lines. So once I have all my panels here, these are the panels that are going to go on the outside of the box. I've labeled them as the sides and the front and the back just so I can keep track of them because um, the other ones are a slightly different size and I don't want to put them in the wrong place. So I'm going to do my stamping with the dough ink here. So it's not going to be too dark. It's going to kind of blend in with the background a little bit and look very faded, which is the look I'm going for. And I'm just going to use a variety of images from the Ahoy Métis set. So these are the outside of the box. I don't have to worry about any sentiments or anything. So I'm going to use some of the larger images on these. And I'm just going to speed up the process a little bit so that this video isn't too terribly long because it's kind of a long video. So you could also add in some little dotted dashed lines, kind of like a treasure map, which I kind of intended on doing and then actually forgot. But just stamp it around and kind of going off the edges. It's very random. They're just to decorate the outside of the box. So now that I have all those stamped and you can see I've already inked a couple, I'm going in with tea dye ink and a blending tool and just kind of inking it a little bit to make it look a little more distressed, a little more irregular than that craft card stock. And it's okay if those little edges get caught and rolled up. I actually kind of like that look. 
Once I have the tea dye on, I'm actually going to go in with some vintage photo as well and ink up the edges and make just the edges a little bit darker so they kind of pop. Having the two colors really gives it some dimension, I feel like. And of course, I am going to do this to all of the panels. And you'll see later in the video, I'm going to do this to three of the panels that are going to go on the flaps that kind of flip out when the box opens. And then we'll do something different on the fourth panel. Now for my box, it's way too bright. So I'm going to ink it up and distress it. And this does not have to be perfectly blended by any means because it's going to get covered up mostly with those little panels. I just don't want it to be quite so bright. I want it to look more distressed like it goes with those little matte panels. So this is the outside of the box. I'm not going to worry with the outside of the flaps, but you could of course do that too. And I'm folding my pieces down so that I can kind of get that darker edge that you get when you're inking over a folded edge. So I've done both pieces of the box here and I'm going ahead and putting my double sided tape on and I'm going to go ahead and attach these two together just on one side. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the flaps that will flop down when the box is open and I'm just going to ink up those as well so that they match the rest of the box. I'm not worried about what's going to be on the inside because you're never really going to see it once it's filled up. And now I'm going to go ahead and apply the panels that go on the outside of the box. So those were the ones I inked up earlier and I marked them as front, back, and sides. It's just easier to put these on when it's still nice and flat like this. And I'm using some Tombow Extreme adhesive to make sure that they stay on very well. And I do like curling up those corners a little bit on the ones that didn't quite get curled up. So now I'm going to work on the pieces that go inside my box. I've cut two pieces of blue cardstock. This is the Moonstone cardstock and a piece of Craft. And they're the same width as what will fit right inside the box. And I'm going to use a couple border dies to cut the edges here. So I'm using one of the Stitch Simple Hillsides. So this piece is going to go in the bag, sort of like an island. And then I'm using two of the Ocean Waves border dies to cut the blue cardstock. So the bigger wave will go in the middle and the smaller wave is going to go in the front. And these pieces are cut a lot deeper than I probably need, but I kind of wanted some play so that I could stack them and give it some height from front to back. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere these to the little panels that go on the inside and I'm going to use the same Tombow Extreme just to make sure nothing falls apart here. And I'm going to start with the one that's in the front and adhere that close to what's going to be the top. And then that way I can adhere the rest of them a little bit taller so that when they are lined up inside the box, they are lower in the front and taller in the back. And honestly, this is sort of a method you use on flat cards and I really didn't have to do it on this pop-up card because it's already three-dimensional but it does give it a nice look if you're looking at it from straight on. So I'm going to add a little bit of that tea dye ink to the craft just to make it match sort of the other craft colors we've got going on in this card. And then I'm adding some stormy sky ink to the tops of the waves just to give it a little more dimension so it's not so flat looking as a solid color. So you can see that gives it a nice um, defined edge and a nice distressed look. Doesn't take too much. Alright, now to assemble my pieces in my box. So the easiest way to do this, I've already got my double sided adhesive on here is to line them up on one of the sides 
I'm just kind of figuring out how far back from the front I want it to go. And then I'm just going to use that as a guide to do the rest and sort of evenly space them. I feel like it's easier to do it this way than to try and put them in once the box is together. And it's also a good way to ensure that it lays flat. So now what I can do is flip them over and pull off the other side. Make sure it's lined up straight. And then lay it over and pick up that adhesive and see there you are lined up perfectly. And it's going to lay flat no matter which way I fold it. And then now I can complete the construction of my box. So I've done three more panels. This is the front flap and the two sides like that. But the fourth one is going to be on the back and I kind of want it to look more like a sky. So I want to do something different. And you could use white paper for this as well, but I already had cut the craft piece. So I decided to do some oxide inking. Since that has some pigment in it, it's going to kind of sit on top of the paper more and color it and look a lot different than it would if I used the regular distress ink. So I'm using the Broken China Oxide and I'm just putting a coat of it on that whole piece that I've cut there. And then to define the edges a little bit, I'm going to go back in with the Stormy Sky and ink up the edges. So you can see it kind of gives it a dark edge. So the Stormy Sky is a regular Distress Ink and the Broken China is a Distress Oxide. And they work together just beautifully. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment on the panel that's going to go on the front. So this is that happy birthday, you are awesome. And I'm using some VersaFine ink here because it's a nice crisp black ink. And that's going to go on the front of my box. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp out my images here. So I'm going to do really fast coloring. I'm stamping them out in jet black so that I can use my Copic markers. And this is going to be some super speedy coloring so that you can see it all, but my video isn't excessively long. The shark is from the Dunna set, but it works really well with the images from the pirate set. I'm doing really simple coloring here, just the slightest bit of shading using a darker color. I'm doing a little shading on the trunks as well and then using an even darker color just for the coconuts. Now for the ship, I did the same thing did some very easy shading on the hull of the ship here with two colors of brown. And then I'm going to go in with a really pale brown and make that my sails. So that they're not bright, bright white. They kind of look like they're worn and they match what's going on in the rest of the card. And for my shark here, I'm going to do a very pale gray on the bottom and then I'm going to use the next darkest gray that I have and use that to do the top and blend it out with that pale gray. So I use my dies to cut out those pieces and I'm going to start to assemble the rest of my card here. So I'm just figuring out exactly where I want those pieces. I'm going to use some liquid glue to put my ship behind these waves in the back. And then my trees are going to go on the front of the island here. And you could add a lot more elements if you really wanted to dress it up. And then my shark's going to go in the front. So 
so it really looks like the trees and the ship are kind of in the background and the sharks in the foreground so there is my sentiment panel and you could also use that uh, extreme adhesive runner if you wanted on these as well I just happen to have the liquid glue sitting there so that's what I'm using and then for the sky piece I decided I want to add a little more detail to it so I decided to run it through with the stitched cloud backdrop and I'm just going to hold it in place with some post-it note tape I tried to kind of line it up to where I had some good clouds in there so I didn't just end up with a bunch of pieces off the edges and then I'm using that extreme adhesive on this one because I don't want the liquid glue to kind of squeeze through the little stitching details because that can happen sometimes and then there is the finished pop-up box card so you don't have to use the dies that cut out the panels there are lots of options you could customize it and I just think making these little maps is so much fun so thanks for watching have an amazing day bye